You're listening to the Fulfill My Destiny podcast with James Levesque. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What's up, everybody? I just want to welcome you here to the Fulfill My Destiny podcast. Week two, can you believe it? It's so crazy. And uh, man, we got so much feedback really off of week one. And look, we're just, we're coupling this with what we're doing really on the earth right now, just helping people fulfill their destiny. So many believers, as we know, from where they are, from where God wants them to be, is like a gap. And we're going to help you bridge that. It's just the bottom line. I want to talk today about, we just got off an incredible weekend here, a fire and fragrance weekend with Rita Springer, a good friend of mine, Dr. Brian Simmons. But there was a real message that came out of all that. And a word that God brought, and he spoke it to me so clearly, was this. And I want to give you the word because I believe it's for you too today. And it's this, if you long for me, as I've longed for you, you'll be satisfied. Let that sink in. If you've longed for me, as I long for you, you'll be satisfied. Well, what does that, what does that mean? Because this life in God was never meant to be like, we were never, it never meant to be one way relationship, right? We were meant to have a connection, a deep connection to God. And it wasn't ever really supposed to end. Like, think about that. A lot of people, like, their relationship to God is an experience they've had, maybe a revival they were a part of, and then, you know, what, what, and then it's gone. And and what's blown my mind is we've had, I've been in meetings, I've been in Pastor Brian's church, I've been in other people's meetings where thousands of people are there. God is speaking so strong. It looks like God's moving powerfully. And then all of a sudden, a few years later, it's like nobody in that whole room is serving God anymore. And, you know, or or can I say burning passionately for God, right? An encounter with God was never meant to be like a one-time thing. It wasn't meant to be like, um, oh, it happened. I checked it off my list. And now I'm going to go ahead and just live any other way I want. That, that wasn't ever the thing, right? Really living for God, really burning for God is, is an ongoing situation. It is you and I passionately love with Jesus and realizing that when we love him right, right? We talked about that. My mom, she passed like three years ago. And right before she passed, I just like, man, I needed to know that she knew the Lord. You know what I mean? And I remember asking her, she was deaf, right? So I put John 3.16 on an iPad and I flipped it around and I showed it to her. And I said, Mommy, I got to ask you a question. God loves you. You know, I knew she knew who Jesus was because of her kind of jacked up Catholic upbringing. But I said, Mommy, I ask you a question. Do you know who Jesus Christ is, right? Because that's the number one base. She said, of course I do, Jamie. And I said, great. Let me ask you number two then. Do you love him? I wasn't ready for the response. She sagged her head. I see a little tear coming down her eye. And she said, I do love him, Jamie, but I don't love him like you do. I'm going to tell you right now, the way you love God matters. Can I just say that? The way you love God matters. The way you love him is going to determine the harvest that you're walking in right? If, if we aren't, if we all love him, quote unquote, but we don't love him the same, that'll be a problem, <laughs> right? That'll be a problem because Jesus said, who's been forgiven much, love much. There is a direct connection between your love and, and what you've been forgiven from and what you're believing God for. And just quite frankly, it's time to burn. It's time to that, that ignition inside of you, that love for God, that passion in your heart for, for Jesus, that is going to be an indicator of what you're stepping into. Just what it is. And again, the word is, if you long for me like I longed for you, you're going to be satisfied. I want to read a scripture in Psalm 91 um, that I think is so powerful. And Psalm 91, and you know what it's like, you know, dwelling in the secret place and all these, uh, you know, things. But here's what it is. Psalm 91, verse 14, it says this, and I'm reading in the New King James. Because he has set his love 
upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. That's incredible. Look, we love Psalm 91, and we love the protection of it, right? He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide in the shadow. We love that, right? You know, rocking my shield, 10,000. Can we just rewind a little bit? Because you have set your love upon me, I'll deliver him. Fixing your heart, resetting your love, right? We should call this podcast Resetting Your Love. Because you have set your love upon me. What does that even mean? What does that even look? You know exactly what that means. That means every day of your life, you're making a real decision to set. You know, I tell my wife, it's just what we do i probably tell her in the course of a day i love her i don't know 10 times including right about the last thing i say on earth before i go to bed i love you i love you doesn't matter phone call walking through the house walking by what of course i she knows i love her but it's like resetting your love right the father doesn't need the accolades for his ego you need the constant declaration of your affection upon him and the father says right here because you've set your love upon me i will deliver you that's incredible because you have set your love upon me he says i will deliver you you know I don't know if anybody knows where Scroon Lake is, but I was I went there shortly after I got saved. And I had an experience that man I will never forget. Basically it was on a lake, and to be honest with you, um it like I thought like the first time I ever saw like deer, bear, like <laughs> bro, it was like jungle in upstate New York. And it was um, just an amazing couple that kind of brought me in in that season of my life that I love dearly. And I was there, and it was his parents' house. You know, the guy that, that kind of loved on me like a dad. It was his parents' house. And in this house, it was like they had a home, and then they had a, like a little shed and a garage. And these were Holy Spirit people, right? The parents were older now. Um, I literally think we called them far more and far, far, like literally that's a, they were like Norwegian, but then they went to like this Ukrainian revival church in, in New York city, right? In Brooklyn. Well, you know, it's cold out. They give me a hint that the, the grandfather's revival books are up in the attic. So I'm like running and, and I just got saved, and I was hungry for revival, and I wanted to see more about the Holy Spirit. And I remember going up in the attic and just digging through these books and, and found some incredible books. One of them I think you let me keep, it was A.W. Tozer, Day by Day. I mean, I have that. I literally have the book to this day. Um, and I'm going through it, <clears throat> you know, going through the book, and then I, I discover something that I have never seen before. A yearbook of a church. <laughs> you heard that right. A, a yearbook of a church. Like, what, dude? Who's taking, first of all, who's taking yearbook photos at a church? You know what I mean? And it was crazy because, like, I'm flipping through, and it was, man, holy spirit, guys. There was all black and white. There was pictures of, of crutches and empty wheelchairs and canes and all the you know healing meetings and tent meetings and it was incredible and as I'm going through the book I come across an article it was something along the lines of you know we must have revival something like that right <clears throat> we must have revival and it was an article by the pastor. And I'm going to tell you, as I look in the yearbook, this guy is like over the pulpit, finger pointing out, screaming in a microphone, like fire. Like reminds me of that old William Branham photo with like the halo over his head, right? This dude is fire preaching, right? And I'm reading it. It's just, man, it's so powerful. The article was so incredible, man. God is going to pour out his spirit in the last days and 
you know, we weren't meant to live without encounter and we're about to see the greatest revival and, you know, miracles, signs and wonders is an everyday thing. It just, I mean, bro, amen, amen and amen, right? And it was crazy because, you know, as I'm reading this, right, and it's telling me all of these things, I'm just like, in my heart, I'm starting to get hungry. Like, I'm stirring for God. I wanted more of God. It was like, it was like, God, this is what I want. I want miracles. I want, you know, we must have revival. Like, this is exactly what I'm looking for. You know what I mean? And I, and I put the book down. And I'm leaning back and my hands are in the air. And I'm like, God, I want you. I want revival. I'm praying. I'm like, God, no, man, give me revival or we die, you know? And it was such a, I felt the Holy Spirit fill this mothy smelling room. And I knew that God was calling me deeper. It was a powerful moment in my life. <clears throat> and as I'm going through the bins for other books, I I never thought I'd see this. A second yearbook. I'm like, what, dude? So I picked the yearbook up. And, and then I realized, comparing them both, one was the 25th year anniversary of the church. And this was the 50 year anniversary of the church. I'm going, bro, if, 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 listen, if this church 25 years prior was empty wheelchairs, man, this book better have empty hospitals. You know what I'm saying? Like, this got to be something crazy. And I'm flipping through the book, and uh, yeah, and no wheelchairs. Don't see, uh, don't see sick people here anymore. No tent meetings. I see, um, I see, I see food. I see a buffet. I see like uh, potlucks. And I'm like, no, we didn't. No, we didn't just trade the upper room for the supper room. <laughs> no, we didn't just trade like the fire for like warm food. And then I had another thought. I know he's here. I know he's here. I know he's here. The Pentecostal Billy Graham, bro. I know he's here. And I'm flipping through the book, and you won't believe it. I couldn't believe it. It did happen. My man wrote another article. Boy, been here for 25 years in this yearbook consistency. Except now. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, boy, looking rough. I saw glasses, Coke bottles, too. I saw Danny DeVito hair. Just go bald like me. I saw, like... He looked, man, a little heavier. He looked like life hurt him, dude. Like revival wore him out clearly. And I rushed to the article as fast. Man, breaking my ankles rushing to this article. And the title of the article was like, We Must Have Balance. I was like, oh, no. And as you can imagine, is it, right? Everything's decently and in order. All the religious scriptures of, of insecurity. God plants you where he wants you. You know, like, like everything to control you. And then I knew we were in trouble within the first two paragraphs when he said, Holy Spirit hoopla. And the whole thing was about, you know, that there's a real place for that. But, you know, uh, a lot of what they, the, a lot of, he believed a lot of what they seen wasn't real. And it was, um, clearly the pictures had less crowds. Clearly the pictures had, you know, it was, I mean, just crazy, dude. And I remember sitting there going, wow, like, God, if this is, if this is what I'm looking forward to, I'm not going. You know what I mean? Like, this isn't what I, well, this is not what I'm living for. And I realized that, I mean, I didn't know I was too young, man. I'm trying to, like, give my life for the ministry. I'm not, and I'm thinking at the time, I'm not signing up for this. I'm not signing up for, like, you know, I'm just not signing up for this. I'm not going to start off on fire and then end in the flesh. But unfortunately, that's what happens to most people. And the reality is, it happened to him. And I'm telling you that because I think over time, 
You know, the Bible says in the book of Leviticus, God lights the fires, but the priests keep it burning, you know? And I'm convinced over time, man, y'all just don't feed the fire, dude. Like, fire needs to be fed, right? When God ignites something inside of your heart, man, you got to feed that thing. We were in Montana with our pastors there and, and like, wanted to, you know, burn a, burn a bonfire in the middle of, so Montana, in the middle of the woods, right? Man, we can't wait to do that and just all smell like ashes when we're done. And you know what I realized about fire? Man, it's work in it. It's, it takes time building it. It takes time igniting it. And when you get it, you got to feed it. The priests keep it burning. And I'm just, I know at this point, so few people keep that thing burning. Man, I'm going to tell you right now, Danny DeVito, cult de sac Coke bottle didn't keep it burning. Because it's life, guys. And you start out and realize that maybe expectations that you thought aren't getting met. And maybe there are things you were believing for that hadn't happened yet, right? And maybe, you know, these things are all there. In Mark 4, it says a seed grows. And though you sleep, it still grows. But first the stalk, right? Then you get, then you get the fruit, then, and then it's harvest time, and you cut the sickle cuts it off. It's a process, man, but it's not in our time. And so the, that's why the Bible says when, when hope's deferred, it makes the heart sick. There's a lot of heart sick people out there because they, you know, things haven't happened on their timeline. And so what you have now on this earth is, is a bunch of just messed up people, man, who feel like they tried the Holy Spirit thing. No, you didn't. You didn't meet them like I met them. I'll tell you that right now. You, you had what happened to me happen to you. You would never go back. You really have an experience with God. You'd be feeling that every single day, man. Heaven is real, guys. His power is real. Signs and wonders are real. Like, man, stop. But the thing is, you can't be content just satisfied. Right? Oh, I believe in miracles, but we never see it. Oh, I believe that the blessing of the Lord is real. I never see it. Oh, I believe that God wants you in a healthy community and accountability, loving one another, but you never see it. What's your value, man? I love people. I, lo I love people. And it shows in my life, right? I love God. It shows in my life. Are there things that I'm believing for that I haven't seen yet? Absolutely. Do I allow the not seen to affect the seen? No. Do I allow the not seen to affect my heart? No. That's how you become Coke bottle busted. And again, I'm going to remind you, God is saying, if you long for me as, I, as I've longed for you, you'll be satisfied. It's a deep under deep that I can't explain to you. It, it is, a, is in the depth of your heart crying out all that you are for all that he is. That is the gospel. You know, we love him because he loved us. I was teaching a Bible study yesterday and talking about the woman at the well. And Jesus is sitting on Jacob's well. And this chick comes up and it's just like, man, the whole thing was really the punchline. He wasn't thirsty. You think he's thirsty? You think he's asking a Samaritan woman? You think a Jewish man is asking a Samaritan woman for a drink? Of course he's not. He wouldn't even touch the, the cup that she drank from. And he says to her, give me a drink. On the cross, he said, I thirst. What is he talking? Does Jesus need a drink? No. What he wants is fellowship with you and I. What he longs for is a deep connection with you to where this whole world gets silent and you can hear his voice and make decisions on this earth that will impact humanity forever. That's what he's looking for, guys. And today, I'm just telling you, like... God wants you to God wants you to set your set your love on him. He wants you to set your love on him. In Matthew 12, it's an incredible scripture. It's ridiculous, man. He heals the withered hand, he heals someone else. Matthew 12 verses 9 through 14, he heals the withered hand. Then all of a sudden 22 to 20, 25, he casts out a devil, and then verse 38 and 39, they say to him, uh, we want a sign. No you don't. You don't want a sign. You want to be entertained. 
You're not looking for a sign. You're looking for for a show. And so what I want to ask you today is this. What would it look like if you set your love on him? It's not a chore, man. It's not like something that you got to get to to establish a connection. It's heaven, bro. It's like every day of your life. What would it look like if you longed for him as he longed for you? What would it look like if there was a real bliss that God could take you up to and your life has changed? I'm going to tell you it's available, man. It's available. And you don't find it surfing Facebook. That's why I'm glad I got people that just run my social media. I mean, I just, I, what am I going to do? Sit online and look at everybody else's life? Come on, man. Live for God. Live for heaven. Don't be consumed with this world. Stare at God as much as you stare at Facebook, bro. Let's go. Consume yourself with him. And I promise you, everything you're believing for is going to come to pass. This is how it works. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. All these things. And so I'm telling you, the Lord gave me a word on Sunday. I delivered it to the church. Chaos is ending. The things that have been holding you back are ending. The delays are done. And heaven is about to set in motion things that have been stuck, things that you've been believing for, and it's time to get unstuck. It's time to ignite a passion in your heart. It's time to ignite all that heaven has for you. And so I want to pray for you today. Thank you. Listen, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let people know you're being blessed by the broadcast. Share it, please. That's how we get the reach out. We're just starting, so we're, we're building our, our YouTube page. But I want to pray for you because here we are starting episode two. It's time to set our love on him. Father, in Jesus' name, for everybody listening to the sound of my voice, I thank you for an ignition again. I thank you for an awakening. I thank you for a restarting. I thank you for a connection, a reigniting. And Father, I thank you that what has been stuck is stuck no more. We break delay. We break uh, chaos. We break the stuck now in Jesus' name. We thank you that you are moving on our behalf. There has been a shift. We thank you that things are about to be in motion. We thank you that there is a breakthrough that has happened already. We thank you that we are stepping into a divine grace, an acceleration for this hour ahead and you are asking of us to set our love on you come on just tell him lord i set my love on you i set my love on you i set my love on you god i set my love on you and i thank you father that you long for us i pray for a deep unto deep connection in the days ahead i thank you for it in jesus mighty name Amen. Come on. We love you guys, man. Can't wait till next Friday. I love, love, love coming to you. I love hearing the feedback again. Subscribe. Let people know. Share the broadcast. We'll see you next week. Let's go. Thanks for listening to the Fulfill My Destiny podcast with James Levesque. If you're interested in learning more about mentorship opportunities, Pastor James leads the Fulfill My Destiny Academy, where world changers like you are raised up and empowered to be all that God has called them to be. If you'd like more information, check us out at fulfillmydestiny.org or stay connected by following Pastor James on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at James underscore Levesque.